Did you know that the food we consume has a significant impact on climate change? Our food production systems emit greenhouse gases, just like fossil fuel, but we don't talk enough about it. This is because more than any other economic sector, agriculture creates a divide between the world that emits for survival and one that emits for luxury. As the world prepares itself to be climate responsible, we need to reset the connection between food, livelihood, nutrition and nature. Food is either manufactured in big factory farms or smaller land holdings. And this is why we create these two distinct agricultural worlds. We therefore need to discuss agriculture and climate change in the differing context of the two worlds. For this, we need to confront the beast of intensive food farming systems, which are also linked to the excessive eating of meat. And this particularly in the other world. And please remember, this is not a debate about meat versus vegetarianism. It is about the way we manufacture meat, how livestock is grown by clearing forests, how animals are fed chemicals and antibiotics. Today, vast proportion of food that is grown is not grown for humans, but to feed livestock. And this has huge implication for food security as well as environmental damage. The other meat question is really about the quantity of meat we eat. So it's not meat, but how much we eat. Is it healthy for us or not? The fact is we know that we need to act against controlling emissions from agriculture, but it is not easy. For instance, New Zealand, where cows are highly productive, contribute almost half of the country's greenhouse gas emissions, had proposed a burp tax. Farmers would have to pay a tax based on the number of cattle in feed. But because of the opposition, this was delayed or even withdrawn. The same, as you will have read, has happened in the Netherlands, where government had proposed reducing livestock numbers. But farmers are on the road, in tractors, protesting. So the meat interests are almost as powerful as the fossil fuel interests. But the fact is, we cannot go ahead with this model of agriculture in a climate risked world. This is where farm and food of our world, countries like India, provide answers to the future. We have, as yet, in most parts of the country, not moved to a highly input intensive model of agriculture. In the case of dairy, most farmers are individuals. They practice what you would call an agro-silvo-pastoral system. Animals are part of their farm. They provide manure, they provide milk. This is the model that we should be promoting. What then should be the elements of the agricultural model for food security, for security of livelihood, nutrition, and the protection of nature in our climate risk world. First and foremost, the model has to be based on low input so that it protects the farmer from multiple risk. This will put more money in the hands of farmers as well. Second, it must focus on increasing yields by improving the health of the soil and water conservation. Climate change will bring new pests for farmers. And this makes it even more important for agriculture to be resilient. But it does not mean increasing the use of pesticide. Third, risk minimization is critical by promoting multiple cropping systems, which will also promote biodiversity. Think of it like a, the diversification of investment portfolios. Fourth, it must include crops that are both nutritive and compatible with local environment. But this choice is not in the hands of farmers alone. 
governments must enable policies that will promote the growing of these crops from procurement to price. Fifth, and perhaps the most critical element, is the choice of food that farmers grow will also be in the hands of consumers, people like us. What we eat, why we eat it. We know that food is medicine, yet we continue to eat wrong. We continue to eat junk. This is really why the food story is incomplete without the involvement of each one of us. It is our diets, it is our food, it is our health, it is our bodies. And that is linked to the livelihood of farmers, to the health of the soils and to climate change. If we are part today of the problem, we can and must be the solution for tomorrow.